For me, lass, what I would say that you should do is, for a reward, take a night off. You've been through a lot over the past few days, and you have a lot more coming forward to you. I would suggest you take a night off and breathe. She nods tiredly. I, I appreciate that. Um, I'll probably do so soon, but I want to get the rest of this done, as much of this done as I can. Especially with this new information, it's important that uh, we get on top of this. I can't keep people in the dark for very much longer that uh, the Mary's deceased. Uh, but yes, um, well, if, if there's anything else I can ever do for you, please let me know. Um, again, I would say, please don't uh, say anything until I have made an announcement to the town, for which I assure you, I will make sure you receive full credit for what you have done here. Your deeds will not go unknown. If anything can be said about Sagata, it's that we recognize those who um, fight on our behalf. Uh, in the meantime, though, uh, please feel free to do as you wish. You may stay if you like or leave. Uh, you've done plenty for us. I would not wish to keep you any further. Um, Miss Hercules, I have a question. She looks at you, and even in the midst of all of this winter, your your bubbly nature, and she sort of notices it for the first time. She's only really seen you at the corner of her eyes, and it sort of catches her off guard, and she she startles a bit and says, uh, y Yes, yeah, young lass, what, what is it? What can I do for you? Um, what is the bone you... Uh, the bone field? Yes, that. Uh, um... It's a... It's a place uh, not too far from Zagata, uh, uh, regarded as cursed land, why, why would you be asking to go there? Oh, there's um this guild, research guild or something? I can't remember. But uh, they're wanting... Archaeologists? Yeah, archaeologist guild. And they're wanting escorted there and back. Oh, um... I, this is the first I've heard. <sighs> Another reminder that I need to get this business done as quickly as possible so that I know what's going on in my own town. Uh, if, um, but yeah, uh, yes, if if someone is asking for transportation, I, I would recommend that either you talk them out of it or uh, try to try to avoid it. The, the bone fields are not. The Bonefields are not a place that people dwell. They're uh, south of Zagata, uh, uh, south um, east, I would say, and uh, they are uh, well. Legend says that they're a site of a of a battle that took place a long time ago, um, and eventually the results of this battle ended in the founding of Zagata. Um, but. Uh, no one crosses those lands. The few that do never return, or they do return, but in much worse condition than they went. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Um, yes, yes. Um, if there's anything else, though, uh, please let me know. Alright, so are we, are you guys going to head out, or more you wish to discuss? What are we doing now? Uh, Aria will kind of chime in. Thank you, uh, Miss Hartgaze. Um, 
when you've had a chance to rest, I would like to ask you about anything you've heard from the kingdom, but only once you uh, have had a chance to rest. Oh, I'm sorry, the capital. Oh, um, uh, of course, I don't have a lot on hand right now, but if you give me a chance, I'll, I'll see what I can get, uh, gather for you. Thank you very much. That would be much appreciated. And, uh, don't forget to take a rest. Believe me, I don't think I can at this point. Thank you again for all you have done, all of you. And, um, I hope, I hope you have a continued relationship with Zagata. You have been all quite helpful. Oh! Oh, must be tired. I nearly forgot. Before you all leave, you have done so much for us. I've never even asked what you call yourselves. What, what should I tell the people when I do tell them? Who are their heroes? What if y'all better come up with the name? It's your turn, not my turn. Y'all come up with the name. I really hope you edit out these awkward silences where everyone just starts <laughs> typing. Nope. I leave them in there. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going with Booker T. No. No, no, oh, at least overt fourth wall breaking references, please. It's alright, so I gotta make an obscure outside reference. Alright. Something that makes sense in world. Uh, I have a name. You guys have 30 seconds to come up with something before I go with it. Yes, um, in our case, uh, you know, we haven't really been like, together that long. We don't really have a name. I guess if we ever figure one out, uh, we'll get back to you on that one. Well, all right then. Um, perhaps when Eri returns for his information, you could tell me. Uh, but please, again, if there's anything I could do for you, please let me know. Thank you, and our sympathies again. Thank you. Goodbye, uh, uh, Miss Hotgaze. Uh, May the light go with you. And with you. And Ari will bow. Almost a formal mili- uh, not military, uh, formal, formal imperial bow before he catches himself and kind of breaks it up and makes it look awful and then goes back and leaves. All right, you, as you uh, make your exits, leaving uh, 
the mayor's building, uh, the governmental building, uh, back down the ramp. Uh, where do you all head? Uh, with that, actually, I w Ari would probably recommend the inn. Uh, time to gather thoughts and figure out what's going on for the day. Alright. As the group of you head uh, to the inn, Olaf. Yes? You make it to the end before anyone else. You come across the Crimson Force Tavern. Um, it's about... Oh, what did I say last time? It's about... Maybe one o'clock in the sort of in the mid afternoon. Um, you seeing uh, sort of like a lunch rush a little bit coming in and out of the tavern. Uh, you uh, do you want to go? You go inside, or are you gonna wait outside? No, I'm gonna go inside and look around the common room. And when I see nobody from my party in there, I'm gonna go to the door of the whoever's room is the closest and knock on it okay <clears throat> you enter as you enter the the crimson force tavern uh, you see the general buzz that normally takes over the place. People running in and out. Um, the waitresses seem busy, but not overly busy. Not as bad as, as it was uh, the first time you were here. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. Okay. Quickly scanning through the room, you uh, don't see uh, any members of your party. Uh, you don't see uh, really much of anyone. You're just sort of scanning for any familiar faces or anything. Um, see people, groups of people sitting next to, but there's nothing uh, recognizable. Uh, you catch a glimpse of one individual sitting at a table by himself and then a few others uh, crowded around. Um, as you're getting ready to walk upstairs and go in, you hear uh, people stepping up uh, behind you and opening the door, uh, and you turn around to sort of glance to see who it is, and you see uh, Ari step through, and shortly after him, the others come up behind him. Okay, I say, oh, here you guys are. How do you guys feel about rats? Uh, come again? How do you feel about rats? Um. Interesting pests, but uh, in large numbers, they can be a pain. Do you want to help me and Gorm come kill some of them? How many and where? Uh, dozens. And they're in the northwest quarter in a wooden house that I found on my map. 
Your map? What does your map have to do anything about this? That's where that's where I found the building on the map. Interesting. Times of the essence. I'm gonna go back. Uh, do you guys want to come kill the rats with me? I guess what what what's so uh, in what's in this building? Don't know yet. We didn't get very far. We, we were exploring the building, and then the rats attacked us, and we ran away. Interesting. Uh, can you guys jog and talk at the same time? And then I turn and I head out the door and I jog back to the building. All of is jogging out of the building. What? What is special about the mansion before you leave? Winter smiles slightly and just goes running in after him. I yell over my shoulder. I said I don't know what's special about it. So we're doing this for curiosity's sake, not you, boy. He's out of... By the time you utter those words, he's out of earshot and Winter is, to, is quickly becoming out of earshot. Uh, Alright. Vinda, do you feel up to uh, slaying some vermin? Um, looks like we're going. Yeah. Now I'll just feed him all the curiosity's cat. Before you even uh, said anything, Eagle, Ari is already walking out. I'm assuming you're like on his shoulder or something. Is there a general store on, on my way to back to the house? Uh, at this point I'm hovering, so I follow after you. Uh, from what you know, Tila's is. Are there any other shops out of the way? Mm, make a perception check. Uh, I mean, as you're jogging and running, you're, you're looking back and forth, but you don't really see... I mean, there's uh, the marketplace, which is right across the tavern, um, which sells many things. Um, but as far as a centralized general store, you're not seeing one. Okay, well then I want to go to the market and I want to look for a place that sells torches and rat poison. Alright. Um, Alright, uh, so you head on over. Uh, winter is following behind you and so as you're jogging you jog sort of towards uh, uh the direction of the wooden house but then have to stop think about it and go back uh towards the market winter you just see him sort of like kind of zigzag back around um and you head down the road uh make another perception check for me please
So do I find a store? Sorry, I'm generating a store. Oh, okay. Despite the appearances, I don't always have everything right on hand. <clears throat> yes, you, uh, jogging through, you find, uh, you hear, uh, uh, someone hawking, uh, his goods. You see, you hear a, a voice say, uh, Liz's adventures break. Got everything you need. Are you going on an adventure? Need a torch for a cave? I've got it all. And as you walk uh, through, you see this uh, uh, man dressed in sort of uh, um, gray, tannish robes. Uh, look a little worn, but not too bad. Uh, he's got some sort of like uh, turban hat with a fancy um, uh, teal blue feather hanging from the center of it, uh, uh, from right above his forehead. And uh, he's dark skin and a pointed black beard and he he looks at you as you kind of stare at him listening to his pitch and says ah you sir you look like you're in need of wares what can I get you I've got wares for every adventurer's needs I need two torches and a box of rat poison two torches I I can get that for you rat poison you say hmm Perhaps I have that. Let me look. Uh, he, from under his desk, he pulls up uh, two uh, wooden torches uh, that look like they've got uh, some bindings and some sort of uh, material, uh, uh, organic material at the top of it. He puts those two on the desk, and then he looks over to the side of his table where he, where there's a grouping of jars uh, with different labels, and he kind of combs through each of them before finally uh, uh, picking a small one out uh, that is like a light, um, uh, like grass green, and he settles that on the table. Hey, there you are, there you are. Uh, heading off to do some, uh, some rat killing, eh? How much? Uh, for it all? Yes. Oh, well, uh, sir, if, if, if there's nothing else you require, I suppose I could part with all this for, uh, uh, ten silver? Um, yeah, I have that much. Okay. I grab up the stuff, I drop the coins on that. Is there a counter there? I drop the coins on the counter and I say thanks and I run away. He uh, he sort of takes the coin and and, and shouts at you as you uh, it's, uh good doing business with you. Adventure again, adventures break. Come get more and just continues uh hawking his wares as you run back. Winter, you are trying to keep pace with John and running through running, running through the streets you're Kind of confused what he's doing. You see him stop, say something, approach as 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 the uh, the merchant begins piling things up on the counter. You're and then you watch as, as John or Olaf exchanges the the goods and then runs again, off in the direction he was originally going. Ten silver is the same as a hundred copper, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you keep pace with him, Winter, or...? Yes. Alright, keep going. Do I okay. need to roll anything? Uh, oh, I'm what? Not, I'm not sprinting, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just jogging. Okay. I would say no. So... The, you you keep going. The rest of you the the rest of you are a little confused, but sort of you're far enough back that you see them zigzag through the market and continue going forward. So it, you pause for a second, but then you're you're all managed to uh, start making your way towards the house. Um, Everybody's coming. I thought nobody else was coming. I thought it was just winter. Area is basically being dragged, or that's how he feels. 
got to go make sure everybody stays safe. Yeah, I mean, winter's trying hard to keep up. We're just kind of, like, behind you guys. Yeah, that's the basic idea, is winter is almost on a dead sprint, probably on your heels and whatnot. Everybody else is like, okay, they made a left up there. Um, okay, can we keep pace at this pace? Yeah, okay, we'll just keep to a normal jog. What is Curiosity doing, Kairath? You probably wait for about 30 minutes with the little girl. Uh, the time it took for your brother to make it back to the tavern, talk to everyone, get his stuff, and run back, it's probably been a good 30 minutes. And you've kind of just been... What, what have you been trying to do in the 30 minutes? Um, at least watch the girl and make sure she stays away from the house. And if possible, sneak up and look through windows and stuff and try and see if I can find any hint of the boy. Okay. As you, as you stand uh, with the girl, uh, and being that you've been in direct sun for a little while, you kind of move her off into a more shaded spot with a, a little building that has a small tarp over it. And you just kind of stand there waiting. Uh, for the first couple of minutes, you guys just stand there in silence. She, looking at between you and the house, not quite certain what how to react. You, continuing to look at the house. Um, the moment you start trying to sneak off to, to go off and observe um, the house, she she tugs and pulls on your on your rope and says, "Don't don't leave me by myself." I'm not going in the house, don't worry. I will stay with inside of you. No, I don't I don't think you should go any closer. I keep going. So uh, you you can uh, as you approach uh, the house. Stealthily. Make a stealth check. Let me look at focus thing. You. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that means if I am, if my stealth check ends up failing, then I can reroll it. Okay, yes. Okay, you begin approaching the house carefully. Um, as you get closer, you notice that um, there's a the sound of. Um, uh, what seems uh, squeaking and scratching has died away for the most part. You can still hear some pitter patter, and what you assume is probably, you know, the last of the rats moving away or maybe finishing the meal that you had given to them. Uh, you peer in through a window. Yes. Okay, make a perception check. Okay, one moment. This would be seen. Looking through, you see what looks to be a large ish room. It's got some remnants of furniture. Um, in it. Um, it looks, looking at it for a little while, 
It might have been a study at some point, maybe some kind of living room. Um, it's really difficult to tell. The house is just so in disrepair that you just can't quite tell what any of these rooms are meant to be, except for some like vague, vague ideas. Um, you don't see any rats or creatures, um, no signs uh, of the boy. You do notice, however, though, as soon as you get down to go to the next window, out of the corner of your eye, you see a sliver of pink next to you. I turn around and tell her to go back. She, You see her sort of half-crouched underneath the window looking up at you. Uh, her little braids uh, on either side of her head are just kind of ever so quietly just brushing up against her uh, uh, against her dress. And she, she shakes her head and says, No, uh-uh, I'm not going back there. I'm not going anywhere by myself. You just see her, she just stares, stares back at you. And there's no, there's no fear or anything in her eyes. She's simply intent and focused. And she seems to be sort of, there's a little bit of excitement in her. Like there's something, like some sort of secret missions going on. But there's also this sort of need to be next to what she sees as a protector. And you see that she, as you just stare at her and contemplate what you do, she kind of inches closer to you, looking around. She looks back towards where you guys were originally hiding and she looks back at the house just sort of trying to see all that's going on around her I sigh and take her back and then wait she follows you willingly um, she stays pretty close to you I mean, and, and at one point she even reaches up and grabs a hold of your robe as you walk uh, to stay as close to you as she can. There's just grumbling. A few more moments pass. And then you hear her say, What's your name? Gorm? Gorm nods. That's a strange name. It sounds like Worm. Where are you from? Uh, I wish I remembered the name of the continent. It's Montana. Oh yeah, it's. A, I don't need to know the cotton. <laughs> Montana. I don't know where that is. That sounds pretty far. Do you have a brother? Gorm nods. Does he do stupid things? Careful. Gorm ponders for a moment. <laughs> with, with his hands to his chin. Did not. Mine does too, but he's older than me, so I can't tell him no. Mom said we weren't supposed to go in the house. She says it's haunted. But he said it just had treasure in it. I hope he comes back. What does it look like where you live? Um, 
got some trees. She found trees. I've heard about those. They're big and sometimes green, I think. Don't they have lemon trees? Yeah, there's definitely desert trees. You are correct. Those are all things that exist. Or I'm just as confused. She sits down and kind of starts playing with rocks and things in the in the sand. Starts drawing things in the sand, and she looks up at you again. Why do you cover your face? I hurt myself long ago. How? I'd rather not talk about it. Why? Did it really hurt? His hand goes up to his face again. (laughs) And there is a heavy sigh. She looks at (laughs) you expectantly. There is no reply. Does it still hurt? No. Then why do you have bandages on? You only have bandages on when you get hurt and it still hurts. They're not bandages. They look like bandages. They cover you like bandages cover you. They protect from the elements and out in away from the town. You mean like a cloak? Yes. I have cloaks, but none of them cover my face. That's weird. Are you afraid people won't like you if they see your face that's hurt? My dad says people only cover things up that they don't want others to see. That's why he covers his hand. He burned it once when he was making, um, I think it was an axe. He made it in his fire and and it, um, it got burned. And now he doesn't like people seeing it. Anyone but this kid would get, would understand the extreme radiation of the desire not of having no interest in talking with her. I mean, looking at her and and now spending some time with her, she looks like she's maybe five or six. Pretty young and uh, evidently very curious. Um, And for the remaining 15 minutes, she plagues you with questions about how you look, why you use the things you use, do you fight, what's your brother like, just anything that pops into her head she asks you and persists if you give her vague answers. (laughs) And they're all vague. (laughs) 
uh, the rest of you eventually um, come uh, upon uh, Gorm and his uh, small companion as they're sitting underneath a tarp and you see she's been drawing uh, lots, she's just drawing things in the sand, but it, you come upon her uh, just chitter chatting while uh, while Gorm is, is talking or just observing the house and keeping an eye on things and, uh, and you hear her say, um, and that's when I told my brother he was stupid, but he, my mom says that he's not stupid because he's older than me and I need to listen to him, but I don't think I need to listen to him. Do you listen to your brother? No. <laughs> Is that an answer or a cry for help? <laughs> and all of you hear that exchange as you come up upon uh, your brother and his apparent new friend. Yeah, his head is just in his hand and he's sitting down on the ground. Looking very disinterested. As much as someone completely covered up can look disinterested. Okay, I jog up to him and um, I hand him a torch. I say, here's your torch. I check this out. And I show him the I show him the jar and I grin. And I say, I bought some rat poison. Is it flammable? Don't know. Didn't ask. Want to try? I, I don't think that's how that works. That's hope. Well, you want to just test it right now? Do we need to know? What? What are you guys sure. doing? Okay, I want to take out my flint and tinder. Yeah, put a little, little, little pinch of it on the ground. Of the rat poison. Are, are the rest of us there? Yeah, you've all, you're all here now, and you're you watch as they. Uh, make what, a little. What are you spot. guys doing? We're testing to see if this rat poison is flammable. What? Why? So that it's... we'll know if it's flammable. No, but why would you? A rat. A lot. Oh, a she's rat. shiny! You hear the little girl come up as as uh, Vinda comes and sees what you all are doing. She has still hasn't left Gorm's sides, but she points at you and says, "Gorm tries Man. to edge away as she gets distracted." <laughs> <laughs> Darts up over Barry's head. Um, hi. Why? Why is um there a little girl? She has wings. Rats? They both have wings. You're wow. Right. I, I do have wings. Uh, what are you doing here? What's your name? Hi, I'm Harmony. That's a weird name. My name's Ellen. My brother's in the house. They're looking for my brother. Gorm's been standing with me. He's taking care of me. And you notice that. As much as Gorm tries to move, she continues to move with him, almost absent-mindedly, just staying next to him at all times. What sort of stuff was she drawing on the ground, anyway? It it looks like various things that Gorm is wearing. Um, okay? You see, like, his weapon, and, any, and things thrown on his belt. And she draws a face that has bandages all over it. Pretty impressive for sand drawing. Get the feeling she probably does this quite a bit. Uh, and that explanation from Olaf makes a lot more sense now than what I was. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. Yes. So my character is wielding a sword, and, or not right now, but he wields a sword and a shield. Yes. Do I need my like I'm, I'm, my sword? Sword's in my right hand. My sh shield is in my left hand. Do I need my left hand to wield the sh to hold the shield, or can I like does it go over my arm or something? Can, like, can I have the shield on my left arm and then also be holding a torch? Technically, you could do that, but you will probably be at a disadvantage for your attacks. Yeah, I think that okay. would be pretty awkward. 
if you want, I would say, in order to fight effectively, you'll probably need to fight with either the torch or the shield, but not both. But you can certainly give it a shot. Um, okay, I try. I stand there trying it for a minute, and I decide it's too clunky. And I look to Gorm and say, I'm not going to be able, if we get into it in there, I'm not going to be able to fight while carrying a torch. Gorm points at the glowing people. I mean, yeah. What? That'll, but if we get separated in there, there's probably a good idea to have some torches. Oh, I forgot some of you are, are torch bugs. Yeah, as long okay, as which... Together. Which ones are which ones of you people are glowy? Anyone with wings can glow. So that's which harmony, one? curiosity, and Vinda. At least everyone in our party with wings. Okay, but Barry, uh, um, Barry, uh, but Barry, Barry and Barry Winter, Winter don't glow. No, <laughs> no. So I seem the- to recall something about summoning the light, though. Right, uh, Sarah? Sarah. Yes, I can summon a light. Oh, with magic? Yes. I don't know all the details of that, but I remember something like that. So, what's does the does the uh? Does the rat rat poison burn? Uh, you set a little rat poison down. I'll say for the purposes of this, you put it on the box that was left by Gorm, um, and you dip. Um, I assume you light your lit the torch. I was just gonna put hit it with sparks from a flint and tinder. Okay. You take a little time and try to ignite the poison, um, and eventually when you get a spark into it, it does seem to ignite, though briefly, um, but it does, it kind of goes up, uh, kind of like hairspray, it goes up in the small flame and then leaves a, a burn mark behind. So it is a volatile combustion? It appears to be, yes. You hear Ellen just go, ooh, as she stares and watches you. Ellen, how long ago did your brother go in there? Her brother? What are you talking about? Um, a long time. Uh, where was the sun? Um, it was over there, and she kind of, um, points to, points to the east, and sort of motions kind of, like, above the wall slightly. It's kind of difficult to tell. She just sort of, just points over towards the east and, and says, it wasn't, it wasn't was in the morning, I think. And what time is it now? It's about one thirty. One forty. So your brother went in there? Uh Yep, he says there's treasures in there, but I don't think there's treasures in there. I think there's just rats. But he always says that there's treasures in places and so he said he was gonna go find treasures. Okay, I am going to try to find some uh, hole towards the upper floors and look around. And off the uh, actual floor, in case there's any rats up there, too. Yeah, as, as you hover up, Gorm just says, watch out for the rat.
uh, easy enough, and uh, uh, the house is littered with holes, it, particularly holes that would be big enough to fit you. Um, are you wanting to go on the first level, the second level, or the third level? Uh, start at the top? Okay. You go to the very, very top. To, uh, I would be about the attic of the turret there. You find that uh, there is no floor for this level. It goes straight down to the second floor. Um, most of the wood is rotted away. Uh, there are giant holes in the middle of the rooms. There's some semblance of furniture left. Um, mostly it's just covered in sand and dust. Any sign of little boy or rats? Microsoft check. Uh, looking at the top floor, it's unlikely that there's anyone up here or creatures. It's, there's just there's no floor for this place. But you move down to the second floor. Um, going and this floor has quote unquote rooms. As far as there are still walls that divide space, but most of those walls again rotten. There's holes in it. Uh, you come across a couple places that look like. Maybe they were once bedrooms, um, but they seem largely undisturbed. You don't see footprints. You don't see small animals. Um, you do see a couple, like, birds perched in nests uh, in, in some places, towards in corners and places out of the sun. Um, but uh, not much else on the second floor. Um, okay, um, by second floor, do you mean there or there? Oh. That, that's the third floor. This is the third floor. This is the attic. This is the second. So there was nothing in the third floor anymore? No. No, the, the third floor it has no floor. It's, it's... Just completely, basically, this this floor of the third floor, or the, the the floor of the third floor, and the ceiling of the second floor is just gone. It's just straight collapsed gone. in, or something. Collapsed or in, run away. Hard to tell. It looks like maybe a mishmash of both. It's basically the third and second floor have become over time one whole section. But was it originally two separate. Hmm. You can you can tell that it originally was two separate. Is there's enough leftover floor that you can you can see that there was a, at some point people walked on in, in the sec the section. So still no sign. Hmm. That is definitely concerning. Um, as you move down from the second floor, you very carefully hear. You hear Gorm approaching the front door, and you see him starting to move boxes out of the way uh, of the door section. You see trailing up behind him, sort of helping, is the small girl that was with him. And she seems to be, like, trying to push boxes Gorm with him. Gorm is trying to shoo her away at the same time. She's not paying attention to any of your attempts. She just sort of dodges your hands and still tries to help you. You move down to the first floor. Go ahead and make a perception check. As per chat, Curiosity tries to stop her from going near the house. Oh, 
also asked where her parents are. Sorry, can I say I need to be paying attention to the chat more. Um, That's okay. The video needs his sound or needs sound for him, anyways. Curiosity, I want you to make me a. Or no, can you can you get on here? Can you roll at all? Or are you just listening to Discord? Okay, I'm gonna roll for you then. I'm gonna roll a dexterity check to see if you can uh, get a handle on her because she's small and she's quick. Okay, you rolled a 13. So I will say, uh, as she as she is uh, following Gorm, you manage to hold on to her by the shoulder and catch her, and you ask her where her parents are, and she looks at you uh, distrusting, and she says, she says, let go of me. I'm, with, I'm helping Gorm. As she tries to make her way over oh, to help him. Yes, I am. You're going to help my brother. I'm helping you. I won't go in the house, I promise. I just want to be out here. I just want to help with the door. She kind of wiggles in your grasp. Heavy sigh. As he loses more boxes. I stand back and let her try to move a box. Do you let her go after you say that, Kyra? Okay. As soon as you let go of your grip, she runs up, and with the with the very last box that's there, um, she she puts her little hands up against it, and she tries to push it across the doorway. Uh, Ari will try to help her, but make her think she pushed it by herself. Yeah, that'll teach you something. Good idea. Go ahead and uh, roll a strength check. <laughs> Oddly enough, as you come up and, and try to like underhandedly help her, you don't really do much more than she does. And she manages to move it just a little, a little bit. And Gorm kind of standing off the side, putting his last box, is watching the two of you just struggle pushing this box across this this <laughs> wood. And for the rest of you, it's quite hilarious, as it appears that Ari has very uh, only a teeny bit more strength than this small human girl. <laughs> uh, sadly, I am not there. I am inside. Moment the door's open, Gorm's going through. Well, there's a there's a big box just being blocked, and, and they're just not really moving it. They might. It looks like they might need a little help getting it across. Yeah, Gorm goes to to help with the box. Okay, make a shrink check for me. Wow, this box <laughs> is just getting the best of everyone. You, well, there's three of us lifting it now. Yeah, you go over to the edges of it with you pulling and with Airy pushing and with a small sliver of help from young Ellen. The three of you push the box aside and you manage to get the very last one uh, across the threshold and uncover the closed door. Or makes note of what that box, of which box that is and decides to go check it later with <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. We couldn't have done it without you. And Ari will pat her on the head. See, I told you I would help. Yeah, Gorm's already walking through the door. 
Wait, 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 wait. He's not waiting. She follows after you then. She crosses into the doorway and she runs up to you and she tugs on your robe and, and holds on to your hand. Oh, That's enough. No. I grab her by the arms, lift her up off the ground, and put her back outside and say, stay out. No, wait, what am I supposed to do? I can't stay out here by myself. Yeah, curiosity will stay, stay with yes, you. Yes, you can. That's what you were doing before any of us came here. Keep doing that. That was before rats started coming out of the house. Then go home. I can't go home. Not without my brother. I'm going to hang her from the porch over, hang by her ankles in a second. <sighs> Winter looks at her. T uh, curiosity here will stay with you. Will he, though? Out of character. <laughs> yes, he's saying that in chat. <laughs> oh, he is. Yes, curiosity has volunteered to stay out. She looks up at the semi- elven man with the large wings and looks at looks him over. She looks back over to Gorm. Okay. I guess I'll stay. I can stay with him. But when you find your brother, you, you're gonna bring him right back, right? Yes. That is the plan, my dear. Gorm heads towards the basement. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. Out of character. What was that last exchange? She asked if uh, if we were going to bring her brother out here quickly, basically. And her brother? Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if that was I think uh, she, I think a GM misspeak or if that was what the kid actually said, strangely. Wait a minute, is that what we're doing now? We're looking for the missing kid? Well, that's, you, that's all she's cared about. You haven't mentioned much else. I don't even know there is a missing kid. She may be telling a story for all I know. I never Worm's saw gone. another kid. Ak, you, uh, your characters will remember this. You have found indications that there was a boy who want a small child that wandered into yeah. the basement. You found footprints and things that were seemed to indicate that he went downstairs. That's why you went downstairs. Yeah, into Gorm the was tracking that. Yeah, has made mention of that. Go, go check the, the video. It's there. Um, as the group of you uh, start heading into the house, you hear Ellen, she turns around and she goes over to Kyrath, and you hear the, her very first question as she says, do your feathers come out? Can I wear them like the other feathers I have in my room? Oh, <laughs> oh no. And with that, we're going to take our break. <laughs> Kyrath, you don't know what you've gotten curiosity into. <laughs> Be beneath, beneath the scarving of Gorm, there is a, a, a expression of extreme relief on his face. 